corners of the globe. Angel food cake. of course, was the top two in the Big Five standing toe-to-toe -to -toe in the Iron River Armory. A noisy, jam-packed crowd brought both teams out a little tight, but after they settled down, you could almost smell the cotton burning as Jeff Demers did his specialty from outside for Iron Mountain. Jeff Steppage of West Iron had a match for that, though, as he uses the glass for a couple. Now, Rick Olds and his Mountaineers moved out to a 15-10 lead when big Frank Jerks battled inside for two points on the rebound. The Wycons came right back, though, behind the wrist action of Bill Kravolik, who reeled off four consecutive jumpers, this one and then another one from about the same spot that came with just seconds left in the first to pull West Iron to within one point, 17 to 16. Late in the game, after West Iron took a seven-point halftime lead, Iron Mountain came back to tie it, where once again the hot hand of Bill Kravolik put one home at the buzzer to give the Wycons a 56-54 win. Although this shot here was not the winning bucket, it was pretty close to the one that Kravolik made. It was the first defeat for the Mountaineers, now 16-1, the 16th win for West Iron against just two losses. Final again, 56-54. Iron. Two last night with a dramatic 56-54 victory over previously unbeaten Iron Mountain. In the Iron River Armory, Bill Kravolik popped in eight first quarter points as West Iron trailed 17-16 after one. Kravolik would score only six more in the game, 
but his 12-foot jumper at the buzzer beat the Mountaineers by two. Now they draw for this district on February 25th. Besides West Iron and Iron Mountain, the top two in the Big Five poll, also on hand will be Ironwood. They have won 10 straight after last night. As Drew Lennon tells us how they scaled the Mountaineers. All the emotion that developed during the regular season between West Iron County and Iron Mountain came to a head Tuesday night because each team knew one team would be on its way and for the loser, a quick exit. In front of a packed house inside the Iron River Armory, Dale Ward puts the first points on the board with this layup. In the first quarter, both teams played evenly, with neither team gaining more than a four-point advantage. Jeff Podgornik puts in a basket still in the early stages for a six-all tie. In the second quarter, the Mountaineers jump out to a four-point lead with this inbounds alley-oop to Frank Jerks. But at the half, Iron Mountain held only a two-point margin, 32-30, with Podgornik carrying the load with 14 points. It seemed like in the first half, we were rushing things a little bit, and uh, it, it can't run with Iron Mountain. In the third quarter, it was almost a replay of the first two. The lead changed hands a couple of times, but neither team ran away with it. Dan Lewis hits the jumper from the corner to make it 42-40 Wycons. Then with under two minutes in the third, Jerks ties it at 48. And at the end of three, it was tied at 50. But the Wycons topple the Mountaineers in the fourth. Mike Nelson decides to go to the hook for a 54-50 Wycon lead. Then the Wycons gain the first six-point lead of the game as Dan Lewis scores to make it 60-54. But Gornick tried to rescue the sinking Mountaineers but was unsuccessful. As the Wycon lead grew in with around two minutes left, West Iron County held a 10-point advantage. Iron Mountain never made another run as West Iron County went on to a 77-56 victory. It was similar to the other games we played. It's a matter of uh, who gets a little jump at the last quarter, and this is what happened. This one, fortunately, was for us this time. The key was stopping Pod Gornick in the fourth quarter because because right, he was getting shots uh, um, right away off their fast break, and, and we stopped him in the fourth quarter. Podgornik led all scores with 26, and Karlovic led the Wycons with 24. That's from the NCAAs, and we'll get to that in a minute, but high school basketball, the big item, and there's no doubt who the favorite is in Class C, as Terry just told you. The 20-3 and three Wycons took on Cinderella Houghton tonight. The Gremlins came in at 13-9. Houghton hung tough for the first half, though. Here the fleet Jerry Destramp catches the Wycons flat-footed, and he cruises all the way down for a layup. Chuck Greenland had his West Iron crew go to a full-court press in the second quarter. That proved to be a key move. Bill Kralovic hit this shot right before the halftime horn in West Ireland 33-27. From there on out, Houghton could manage only 13 more points, though, and the White Cons moved on to the regional championship game 66-4. At halftime, we just told ourselves to settle down, and uh, uh, we switched defenses. We switched to a 2 one 2 zone, and we uh, packed it in, and I made him shoot from the outside. We, uh, we're kind of scared. It's, uh, it's the first time up here, and uh, it's, it's a big floor. And we never played on it before, but uh, in the second half, we uh, really settled down. Hopefully, we're not going to have a slow start tomorrow. I'm sure tomorrow's game will be tough, and uh, maybe with one game under the belt, I think uh, we'll be ready to go tomorrow right from the beginning. Kralovic led the White Cons with 18, while number 41, Mike Nelson, can 16, and Danny Lewis had 14. For Houghton, Destramp led the way with 18, while Steve Rigg chipped in with 11. In tonight's second game, has ever seen in six foot two senior Dave Archer. What a matchup it should be, and you'll see it next right here on TV6. Live from the CB Hedgecock Fieldhouse on the campus of Northern Michigan University in Marquette, this is Class C. Michigan High School Regional Championship Basketball. Brought to you in part by the Ontonagon County Telephone Company. Chuck Greenland, number 10, Tony Brunelli. 12, Matt Sherman. Sophomore Michael Nelson. For Manistique, number 33, 6 1 junior Bob Brandstrom. For the Wycons, number 42, 5 9 junior Jeff Shepik. For Manistique, number 45, 6 3 senior 
6'3 sophomore, Daryl Luzon. For the Wycons, number 44, 5'8 senior, Bill Krelovic. For Manistique, number 55, 6'2 senior, David Archer. And for the Wycons, number 50, 6'1 senior, Dan Lewis. The officials for the first game, Jerry And right now, West Iron puts out their big man, six foot six, Michael Nelson, against Ed Clement of Manistee. The ball is up, and we're underway. Bill Kralovic gets things in gear for the Wycons right out the bat. Air ball right out the bat for the Wycons, though, however, by Jeff Shepik. Chris Gagne is the point guard for Manistique. He'll do most of the ball handling for the Emeralds in this contest. Now the Emeralds looking at Clement from the corner. Can't find it, but Archer's there. He's got the board in pocket. Well, already we hear from Dave Archer. It looks like they came out in a box and one on him. And they're really going to emphasize not letting him get the points, but he still managed to anyway. <laughs> well, teams have tried everything this year to stop him. Double team, triple team sometimes, but he still somehow, like you say, finds the hole. West Iron now, some good power rebounding, but Archer comes up with the loose ball. And the Emeralds control with the two-point lead just underway here in this Class C regional game between the Manistique Emeralds and the West Iron County Wycons, two teams that deservingly belong in this final game. Kralovic falls down the board, and Lewis brings it up past midcourt for the Wycons, working out to the right side. And they'll slow things up here. Kralovic, he likes to pop it from that 20-foot mark. Yeah, he sure does, and he's a super shooter, and as of late, he's been extremely hot. Gets that remote, he was 9 for 9 from the field. Now, looky there, Bob Branstrom at 6 foot 1, ties up 6'6", six, six, Mike Nelson, and we got a jump ball. Manistique playing the defensive tip, and Lewis controls for the Wycons. Fake shot, off the glass in the line. It's a tie game. Well, that's nice body control by Dan Lewis. Uh, it was good, to, actually good defense by Manistique, but Dan managed to shoot a foul away, kind of lean into his left, and uh, he still converted it. Body control is the name of the game. Of course, at 18 of 19 free throws last night, and there is another one. Make that 19 of 20. He set a record for regional free throws made in one game last night. He'll be going for some more free throw records should he continue at his present rate in this game. Well, it looks like so far Manistique's playing kind of a flattened out 3-2 zone. They're really swarming the ball well, and they, they look like they've come out ready to play. And it worked well for him against Westwood last night. It was kind of like, uh, Seb Ruby calls it his own version of a 3-2 defense. It's like you say, it swarms and, and uh, rotates very quickly, and they are swarming the ball. They are really pestering oh, they the sure Wycons are. at this point, and the Manistique fans respond. Ball gets loose, but they maintain control. Dan Lewis driving the lane. Nelson... Looked like he may have walked on that play, but they called a foul instead on Gagne. Pressure on Chris Gagne, the ball handler from Manistique. He does a good job of it. Let's we'll see how it works. Loose ball picked up there, of course, by the Wycons as they get the three-on-two break going. Kralovic's going to slow things up there and bring it back to the point. Now he's going to let it rip down the goes. Well, a very savvy play by Bill Kralovic. He didn't have it originally. He kind of backed it out. And then the defense kind of went to sleep on him, and he just simply hit the 18-footer. Very heads-up play. All right, Archer now to Gagne. In traffic. Back cross-court pass over here now. Clement looking. Here today against Sheboygan Catholic. Or check that, just Sheboygan. They were a very highly touted team, I guess, during the regular season. Well, it looks like uh, Ann River's just going to go for one shot here. They'll probably get it down to about the 7-second or 8-second mark and look for a shot. There's a man they want to take that shot, and he missed it. But when you miss and they have someone like Brian Lewis to follow, it's really no trouble. Archer at the buzzer, lets one fly, hits the board, and that's all we have in the first period. With the score, West Iron 14, Manistee 11. And that will just, uh, no bonus situation, that will just bring the ball out of bounds here. So Shepik gives it to Kralovic. Kralovic now working the point back, and will take that shot. That's the one they want him to take, and I can see why. You're exactly right, Dwight. He's an excellent stand-up shooter, and if you don't get a hand up on him, he's going to drill it. Well, he just ate Iron Mountain alive, and that's the reason, the main reason why the Wycons did so well against Iron Mountain. They were unable to shut Kralovic down, 
the Emeralds are going to have to do the same thing if they are to come out a winner in this ball game. 16 to 11 is our gap now as the Wycons have suddenly pulled out to a five-point lead just underway here in the second quarter. Inside it goes to Nelson. That hook. He was hammered. And they scored yet this quarter. Bounty, he's got some range. No. Somehow didn't find the aim or the range on that one at all. That's not the kind of defense you want to play. No, it sure is. And he let him on the inside of him and went for the ball fake. And of course, that's a sin. Anytime a defender wants to stay down on his feet and not go for the ball fake. And of course, bringing the arm around like that just made it so much more obvious. If you're going to get the ball, you might as well get the ball. I mean, you might, <laughs> instead of just waving the arm. But that's the way it goes sometimes. You can't have total control of the situation. Nelson on a hook. No good. And this time Luzon comes back with the rebound. Almost lost it momentarily and now does on the line. <laughs> that brings the West Iron crowd alive. Okay, let's see exactly what happened here on this one basket. And if there's a foul there, right there, you see it. Well, as you can see, the, the defender pattern. simply wanted to block his shot. And, uh, and instead, didn't block his shot, instead ended up falling him, giving him the three-point play. Right. I believe I credited Luzon with that foul. That was a Branstrom, by the way. Archer, and we have a whistle. Karlovic now is going to work off the uh, wing and drop it inside there to Dan Lewis. Nice move, and it's jammed. Well, the same type of move again. We saw the Manistique player leave his feet. And I know here at Northern, Coach Brown constantly preaches uh, you have to stay down on your feet. You know, we... Some, yeah, some of the young players just like to jump and block everything, but you're really doing the guy a favor when you jump in the air. Because uh, the offensive player has that advantage of knowing whether he's going to fake or whether he's going to shoot. And most of the time it is a fake. You know? That's right. Because especially inside, you want to get that guy up in the air, jump in, draw the foul, and make the hoop. And that's exactly what Dan Lewis did. The shot, however, on the free throw is no good, but Nelson's there with the follow. And Luzon clears the boards for the Emeralds. We're nearing the midway point here in the second period with the score 24-13. West Iron up by 11. And Clement had a couple of quick uh, baskets from the corner earlier in the game. Let's see if they go back to him. No, it's Luzon from 18. Can't get it down. Back on a 2-1 break. Looked like Stebbins may have traveled, but they didn't have to down. Oh, that was a very nice play. You're right. It was close to a travel, but... Uh... Boy, Dan Lewis brought that rebound down, took it off on the dribble, and then a nice feed for Shepard for the layup. Anastasia's got to be sending out some distress signals. Trouble getting it inside. Stepich now on the fly, works his way inside, lays it over. And in. yeah, yeah, yeah. The fast break by Iron River is really hurting Van Steek. They aren't getting everyone back. And it's, it's simple. Iron River's just beating him down the floor. Donnie now is going to do his own little fast break, and he misses. Emeralds really having some frustrating problems right now. West Iron back again. Stepich. And we have a whistle and a foul, it looks like. It's going to be called by Brian Lewis. Well, very heads up play by Bob Brandstrom. Uh, that situation. Timeline really here. Wide open in the corner is Luzon. Can't get it again. Just an exact opposite of the Emeralds play last night as uh, they were getting those shots. But today, no way, says the rim. Kralovec now. He has some awful... Uh, <laughs> let's just get back to the game. Kralovec probably would get the award for the most often mispronounced name by sportscasters across the UP this year. We've called him Kralovec, Kravalik, and all sorts of things. But it is Bill Kralovec. And the West Iron fans wanted to make sure we got that right. So hopefully we're straight the white. Okay, now checking back the action. Now Manstein gets a bucket to make it 32-17. And we're going to have a break in the action. They have shut him down. You know, they've shut him down very well. But he still has seven points, believe it or not. But that, that is shutting him that's, down. That's you know? what I was going to say. That is putting the stop on Dave Archer. He's the leading scorer in UP, averaging about 30 points a game, which is almost half of Manistique's uh, average per game. Okay, now the Wycons are working very patiently. Now they have the lead. They can take their time. No need to rush. As Stepich now works it back out to Kralovic. And that's basically what's going to take place here. They're just going to keep on working until they get an easy shot. Like that one. Very, very. 
very well thought out offensive plan, I would think, at this point by the White Guys. his feet were in cement by any means but like you say it's a judgment call he was planted maybe uh, momentarily so and it always looks so easy to call on the replay <laughs> but uh, when it originally happens it's an awful tough call at this point in the game i think yes you've got to call that though definitely blocking yes all right you're at the line he continues to hit at a tremendous clip 20 of 21 and I was handed a note to me that Archer needs just six free throws to break the all-time record for the uh, two-game regional combined, two-game combined uh, number of free throws. Of course, last night he hit 18, and there's number 21. Well, I would think he'd have a very good chance of uh, breaking that. Well, man, Steve's coming down a little uh, up-court pressure now themselves, a 2-2-1 full-court press. There, dribbles through nicely, though, by Lewis. Nelson gets open and gets the shot to fall. That. You know, he, he took the ball to the basket. And it's just sort of like a big orange canary and then decided to tee it off through the net. Very nice touch by Dave Archer. But of course, canaries aren't orange, they're yellow, but uh, <laughs> I think people realize that. I'm not colorblind. Here we go. <laughs> what a move, and I can't believe it. Well, things are going well. That's for sure. Everything falls. And right now, the Emeralds are falling at the half, 40 to 21 at the hands of the Wycons of West Bayard County. And with that, we'll take a break and be right back in just a moment. 21 West Bayard County. Break and be right back in just a moment. up the net to cut the lead to 21 for the Wycons. Emerald still trying to apply kind of a loose full court pressure there. Nelson scores some good ball handling. Dishes off there to Lewis who fires it over to Kralovec. A ring around the rim and it goes down. Back comes the Emeralds with Gane passing over to Branstrom. He finds Luzon in the corner. He's got that one. Well, that time the defense stayed in on Archer. They kept two or three guys right around Archer in the post area and just let lose on shoot. Unfortunately, he hit it. Two on one break. Nelson going to the rim. No! I can't believe the Nicole goaltending on that one. Well, that was close. The net was hit. And a uh, decision official had to make is whether the ball was in the cylinder when the net was hit. That's if true. it was not, then it was not goaltending. Oh, well, he's getting hot. Branstrom now. Fires went in right after Luzon hit one from the corner. The Emeralds have somewhat uh, got things going their way for, for a moment. In a way, it's 19-point lead by the Wycons. Got a little bit of a delay call there. It was I didn't hear the whistle. Of course, with these headphones on, it's hard to hear anything. But we did get a foul called on Branch from that time. Well, there's He's no doubt about down. Iron River wanting to follow on that. <laughs> you can hear the fans up behind Yes, they, us. they do have that one advantage that they do have about, oh, I'd say about three or 400 extra fans in the same anesthetic does, and that's really got to be a plus for these kids out here. Oh, very impressive move by Mike Nelson in the middle. He put the ball on the floor in traffic and kind of shot a long way up. Very impressive shot. So between him and Henry Caspel, I don't know who has the brighter future. Both very good ball players. And both very, very tall. <laughs> yes. All right, Lewis now fires his way through the middle. And he got uh, some pressure applied by the Wycons. A little drop kick there <laughs> by Kralovic. And we'll just inbound it again and start all over. Bill Kralovic, what a ball game he had just the night before. And she had 18 points for the Wycons in that contest as they won easily over Houghton. Archer this time finds it. No 
it'll go. And back we come the other way. That was very nice defense by Brian Lewis. Got a hand way up on Archer and forced him to change the arc of the trial. Well, that strikes again. And that makes it a 56-29 ball game. Fantastic really having their hands full. At this point, I'm sure they're wondering, gosh, should have we won last night or not? This, this is quite a ball team, this West Iron Club. And this, like I said, the frustration is now really beginning to show. Dan Lewis now brings it down court. Gagne almost had a steal there, but uh, fell back into the hands of Lewis. Kralovic, that's his five. Oh, my. Oh, well, he's dead late. You know, you give him an open shot, don't get your hand up on him. He's going to drill, and that's what he did there. He may even uh, have a chance for a three-point play. Never seen it. I don't know if we got a shot of that, but uh, he goes through a little procedure before he shoots each free throw. Oh, yeah. Got to get those... Uh, Socks in the right way. I've never seen we'll anything. Have to sweat out the hands. We'll have to say that's unique. Yeah. Any time now, Bill. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, we got to break into action. I think he keeps time like that. One, two. I think maybe it's a leftover from aerobic dancing class. Maybe I, I, I don't. Or things like that. Uh, but, uh, that's definitely different. Quite a ball player, Mr. Bill Collins. Oh, we have a correctable error situation. Uh, Iron River was not in the one and one yet, or West Iron ah. was not in the one and one yet. Okay. So what they do is disallow the free throw. It's a correctable error, and they'll just take the ball out of, out of bounds and play from there. <laughs> well, there we go. Back oh, with Lewis getting loose off of Archer, who came out and tried to play some defense up front, but uh, Lewis sidestepped it and got in for an easy basket. How many layups? Beautiful ball fake once again, Dwight. Yeah. Iron River players really ball fake well and get the man Steve players off their feet. Here we go, back inside. Now back outside. There we go. They just keep working it back and forth, play a little volleyball, and into the hands of Nelson it goes. Oh, it's a nice turnaround shot by Nelson. He put a nice touch on it. Uh, he's going to be a fine young player oh, in the future. I was just going to say, it just if he's not a dominating force now, I'd hate to see what he becomes in the years to come. Look out. West Iron again, running away with it here. And, uh, and again, we can see the fine athletic ability of Lewis. You know, Dan Lewis, he brought it in, did a little double pump, waited for the defender to fly by, and just laid it in. 30-point margin now. First time the Wycons have got to that margin. Archer now going to drive, put it up in 10. There's that touch again. Checking the attendance of the attorney. I believe we have 10,210 paid attendance that uh, checked in to see the Hemscock Fieldhouse over these last several days. Bill Perlovic, the man with the ritual before every free throw, and it seems to be working. 69-39, our score. With 5.47 remaining to go in the final frame. Archer with the ball at midcourt now. Handles the ball over here to Gagne. He's got a 15-footer. Normally that shot would go down, but not today. There's nothing really working well for the MO. Well, poor Dave Archer. I hear a fan yelling, shoot, when he has the ball, but I bet you'd like to turn around and say, oh, can I, with three guys guarding me? <laughs> Must be a frustrating night for him. It really has been for the entire Manistique Ball Club. It happened to him last year. The quarterfinal play would be a great representative of the UP. Any team that can beat Iron Mountain by 20 or so is definitely going to be a great representative. I guess why I'm so impressed with them, too, is that they don't have any one player that they have to rely on. They have a lot of balance in it. And on any given night, you know, any one of them can get hot and contribute. UP teams uh, are very well represented, it looks like. Of course, they have North Central. They'll be going up against Rudyard, another UP team. So one way or another, we're going to be sending somebody to the semis. Of 
Sneak, another Manistique ball player. So uh, John and I, of course, uh, graduated from the same class. I know John very well. But he has seen a record fall with Archer as he anticipated breaking that record. 29 regional tournament free throws. impressive class C teams I think we've seen in a while. Well they sure are you know especially for that low class they and, and the, I think they obviously the key to their team is they have so many good athletes on it and they just fly around they have fun playing and they, they play hard and they keep pressuring and keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you and uh, they're just a very good team they don't have any weak spots. And I think you're just looking at the team you say well they don't have much as far as height how can they hurt us? <laughs> they can hurt you with, like you say, almost every angle. With everybody shooting well, and he worked the ball so patiently on offense. And that's a credit to Coach Chuck Greenland getting that offense to run the way a coach wants it to run. Well, that's right. You know, he was a Class C coach of the year and well-deserving. Okay, more substitutions here. We'll try to get those to you as there'll be a host of them before this game expires. And Callan. Again. This is a play by Troy Brunelli. A savvy defensive play, anticipated the pass, and uh, stole it, went in for an easy layup. Okay, All right. Hitting the boards hard. Back they come the other way. They just can't get enough of this. 84-51 is our score. We'll get that one. As things wind down, we'd like to thank some people who have brought you this game. Patty Gallion has been running the option in this contest. Look at that. The confetti flies. Scott Bosey out driving to the basket. Uh, put up a prayer up in the air for a while. I think he thought he was Michael Jordan out there. And, uh, but still managed to convert it. Very nice shot. I was busy rolling credits here. I didn't catch that one. I have to catch the replay on that one later. Thanks, guys, to Patty Galley and Randy Audio today. Doug Richard. Hurricane Wycons. As the presentation has just been made to them, they are the regional champions. And of course, Romana Steak gets another year of runner-up. But again, a fine year for the Emeralds, nonetheless. Well, it sure was. You know, the final score was 86 to 51, and that is one of the largest winning margins we've ever had in a championship game. And that's not putting down Manistique at all. That, I, I think, just speaks so well of Iron River. That's how strong a team they were. And we can see a happy bunch there. <laughs> Indeed, with the shimmering trophy and some glowing faces. You know, no question about that. And well-deserved by the West Iron County Wycons. And uh, looking at to some other great achievements individually on that team, Bill Kralovec. I can see why they wanted us to make sure we got his pronunciation of his name correct because just an outstanding player, did everything well. Assists, shots, and uh, points. What can you say about the kid? He just uh, came in and just did a great job. And, uh, and because of his play, the Wycons are where they're at. There's no question about that. Back with the final wrap-up on today's games, and maybe we'll take a wrap-up on both of them in just a moment. at 16. Uh, Grolovic, as we've been talking about, had 18. Shepik had 16. And boy, you can't get much more balanced scoring than that. And then Dan Lewis did a superb job on shutting Archer down early. That's for sure. Of course, uh, Grolovic on the tourney has a total of 36 points, 18 each night. Not much else you can say about a kid who does uh, that. And he deservedly got the Outstanding Player Award to uh, help pace his team to it. Like I say, once again, 86-51 final here with West Iron now advancing into the quarterfinals where they will play Ross Common. I have not heard a whole lot about them, but of course, uh, West Iron, they keep playing like this. There's a shot they may wind up somewhere down in a place called uh, Chrysler Arena if they keep uh, playing at this pace. For the North Central Jets, 51 in the C final. Dave Archer had five points in the early moments, but West Iron soon took control. They had a three-point lead after one quarter, and it was 19 by halftime. I expected a, a much tougher game, and uh, I'm sure we all played hard, but uh, it was one of those things where I guess momentum starts one way and it just continues, and uh, you get games like this once in a while. Just thought whether we would be able to play better than what we did, or I should say have the score be closer than what it was. I really had uh, high hopes of be being able to beat them. 
Bill Kralovic had 18 today, 36 total in the tournament. He was named most valuable player. Dave Archer, the UP's leading scorer, can 25 this afternoon for Manistique. Archer is a, just a fabulous player. Uh, obviously, he's the best player in the UP. Keep it off. Dave Archer, he, he's a great player, and, and so uh, we just we just tried to hold him down, and uh, um, we had Brian Lewis, um, he's a junior this year, and uh, he, he played some really super defense on him, and then uh, um, every time he posted up down low, the entire team just collapsed on him. In Wednesday's quarterfinal action, then what fell at the hands of Detroit St. Vincent de Poor is, but as Dwight Brady reports, there's no reason for disappointment. 22 points was the closest any team in Class C had come to the undefeated Eagles in tournament play heading into yesterday's championship game. That would change, though, before the end of the contest because West Iron played DeCorey's very tough, only trailing 10-5 after one. West Iron continued to keep the Eagles out of their running game in period two while they patiently waited out DeCorey to get shots like this one from Mike Nelson, who led the way with 12 for the Wyckoffs. The lightning quick D, however, of the Eagles gave up very few easy shots. Couple that with West Iron's 22% shooting from the field, and it made for a 24-16 score at the half. The guards were so quick that they just cut off everything. And, uh, most of our plays start with wing passes, and uh, we just weren't getting that pass, and so that pretty much shut down our, our offensive plays. The Wycons were by no means out of the contest in the second half and hung in there despite the stiff odds. Jeff Sheppage here from the corner. But the quickness of DePores was just too much as they sped on to a 48-36 win, but not before the Wycons had earned the respect of this great team from the Motor City. Hardly anybody in the tournament played us any harder than that. Just the kids going out and giving you hell on that. With this weekend split, West Iron compiled a 24-4 record overall, which gave them and their fans plenty to cheer about despite the season-ending loss. Where is West yeah. Iron County is the most frequently asked question about the Class C runners-up. So, Jim Lake... ...of complexity uh, that goes into making a shoe, definitely. This is the biomechanics lab at the Converse Shoe Company, where they are pushing the limits of athletic footwear design helping this company rebound from some technological air balls. We didn't have a, a credible technology. Converse president, Gib Ford, remembers when the company owned 90% of the basketball shoe market with its canvas and rubber Chuck Taylor All-Stars. They were first sold more than 70 years ago. It was considered a superior shoe from a performance point of view. Um, and that's what made it, I think, the dominant shoe at the time. About 20 years ago, the technology began changing, but Converse did not. Nike and Reebok began sprinting ahead, using innovations and materials designed initially for running shoes to make basketball shoes lighter and more stable. The fast break left Converse a distant third with only 9% of the hoop market. We didn't adjust as quickly as we should have. Converse finally began playing catch-up about four years ago. The company increased its research and development budget by 60%, spent $2 million on state-of-the-art testing equipment, like high-speed video cameras to analyze shoe stability. Excessive movement is thought to be related to injuries, so we want to make shoes that are stable. They use sensors which measure pressure points inside a shoe, yep. and a force plate built into the floor of the company's test court to quantify what is happening when shoe meets hardwood. In addition, Converse engineers photograph hundreds of barefoot volunteers to make sure shoe designs will snugly fit the average buyer. And prototypes are put through a robotic gauntlet of pounding, flexing, and stretching. If you don't have this technology available, it's a lot of trial and error and maybe more of an art form. The end result is a line of basketball shoes with a gas and liquid filled disc in the heel. Converse claims this so-called REACT technology improves cushioning and stability. But is it technological advancements or bright colors and expensive ad campaigns which make a shoe a success? The experts say it's a combination of all those things. But they also say the technology is much more than nylon deep. Today's athletic shoes certainly look drastically different from the old Chuck Taylor design. I really believe in the innovations. Uh, a lot of people say they're gimmicks, but most are explainable in scientific fact. Most shoe buyers are believers. And all the technology is helping a whole lot. They can help you perform. I think it's a tool you can use to help you play. They just are better built. They last longer. Whether that is fact or perception, companies like Converse keep score by watching the bottom line. 
And with sales up 14% this year, the sophisticated shoes developed in this lab are flying high.